Hello and welcome to my presentation at the 13th Brazilian meeting on adsorption. It's an honor to be here, to have been invited. I thank the organizers for this invitation and I praise their work in putting together such a beautiful conference program under the difficult circumstances of COVID-19 in 2020. My name is Marcelo Castier. I am a professor of industrial engineering at the Universidad Paraguayo Alemana in San Lorenzo, Paraguay, and an adjunct professor of chemical engineering of Texas A&M University in Qatar. The topic of my presentation will be the behavior of fluids confined within porous solids, the modeling using equations of state. And in doing so, this is like 15 years of research I have done in collaboration with many groups put together in a 25-minute presentation. I hope this is useful to you and let's then talk about the behavior of fluids confined within porous solids and its modeling, the modeling of this behavior using equations of state. So the big question I want to answer during or try to answer during this presentation is whether we can utilize an equation of state that's often used for chemical process design and apply it to model adsorption. And I'm referring to equations such as the Peng Robinson and Suave Redlich Huang equations of state that are used on a regular basis to design chemical processes in the oil and gas industries and in the petrochemical industries. Because if we can do that, there are some advantages. The first of these advantages is that we can use the same model, the same thermodynamic model, for the bulk phase and for the adsorbed fluid. We will develop, I'll show you how we have developed model for confined fluids, and then we can apply this model to the bulk phase by assuming that the bulk phase is just a phase confined within a huge confinement space. Then, if we can do that, the next advantage is that we can use a tremendous body of work about algorithms for phase equilibrium and apply these algorithms to make complicated calculations of adsorption. Adsorp adsorption with pore condensation, uh, adsorption with pore size distributions, many types of calculations can be carried out taking advantage of this body of knowledge about algorithms for phase equilibrium. And finally, a third advantage that I would like to mention is that we can use the same model to calculate the adsorption isotherm and to calculate heats of adsorption. Again, this is advantageous because we have a consistent representation of phase equilibrium or adsorption equilibrium and the calorimetric properties. There are several approaches to modeling adsorption some of them are very detailed and I'm not going to cover them here. I'd like to mention molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo simulations. And some of them are very empirical, very simple expressions, just like some sort of simple fitting. What I want to discuss is something in between, something that has theory, but doesn't take as long as molecular simulations and in this way may become a practical way of doing adsorption equilibrium calculations for chemical process design. And then I would like to mention three approaches in this intermediate category. The first of them being classical density function theory, then multipotential theory of adsorption, and repurposed equations of state. Of these three, I have direct experience with the last two, the multipotential theory of adsorption and the redevelopment or repurposing of equations of state. And these are the two approaches that I'm going to talk about during my presentation. 
let me begin with the multipotential theory of adsorption. On the upper left corner, we have a representation of a bulk phase and of four different pore types. And by pore types, I mean pores that have either different size or the walls are of different materials, deep materials or both. And then on the right lower end of this figure, we have the magnification of one of these pores. So we have the two walls, let's say this is a slit pore, and an empty space, a pore space between these two lateral walls. And this pore space is discretized, so I have discrete elements between these two walls, and what I want to do in the multipotential theory of adsorption is to find out the local composition, the local amounts of each component in each of these elements. What we need to do is to calculate the properties of the system as a summation of the properties of each of the regions, the bulk region and each of the pore spaces. And for the pore spaces, since we are discretizing, we need to add the contribution of each element. So we have a double summation, for example, for the volume and for A, which represents the Helmholtz energy. This Helmholtz energy is split in two contributions. The contribution on the left arises from the interactions of the fluid molecules. And this is a, an equation of state. Can be a cubic equation of state, like Van der Waals equation of state, Peng Robinson, or any other, and may also be a non cubic equation of state, such as an equation of state of the Saft family, statistical association fluid theory. So it's a conventional equation of state. The next term represents the effect of the field, for example, the field imposed by a pore wall, or, for example, the effect of gravity. The effect of the pore wall can be represented by a model. A one, one that's commonly used is called the steel potential, and its formula appears on the screen. It contains structural parameters of the adsorbent, but also contains terms that relate to the interaction between the pore wall and the molecules of the fluid. Having put together a model, then the mathematical formulation that we need to follow is the minimization of the Helmholtz energy. When we find the condition of minimum Helmholtz energy, we will have found the equilibrium condition. This plot shows an example of methane adsorption in a slit pore with 2 nanometer wall-to-wall -wall distance at 298 Kelvin. The vertical axis is the molar density and the horizontal axis is the distance from the molecule to the pore wall. And we are representing just half of the distance because this plot is symmetrical. What we see is that very close to the wall, you will not find methane because the repulsion between methane molecules and the wall is very high and no molecule of methane can be that close to the wall. Then there is a peak, very pronounced peak, then that quickly fades away and towards the center of the pore. So you get a qualitative description of what happens within a pore using this type of behavior, but this type of approach is not really meant as a replacement for molecular simulations. It's meant to deliver adsorption isotherms, such as the one I'm going to show you here which is for methane in slit pores of three different widths. Here we are comparing these results to results of the classical density functional theory. And we have done many comparisons of results of the multipotential theory of adsorption to experimental data. In the case of this table, we fitted the pure component parameters and of the model, and then we applied these parameters to mixtures in a predictive way, and we see that the errors are quite acceptable. As my final comments about the multipotential theory of adsorption, 
we can get a qualitative description of fluid behavior inside the pores. There is a good correlation or even excellent correlation of pure component data. We can get good predictions without fitting any additional parameters when you deal with mixture data. And the current work we are doing is to try to represent pore condensation by doing or by including in our first calculation procedures the global phase stability test. The calculation of each point in an isotherm with the multipotential theory of adsorption takes about one to two minutes in a regular computer. What if you want to do it faster? The approach we have taken is to repurpose equations of state. We give up predicting the fluid structure within the pore and we impose a structure beforehand. We assume that there are three regions within a pore, and this is, say, a cylindrical pore. Region 1 is close to the center of the pore, and in this region, the distance between the fluid molecules and the wall is so large that essentially there is no effect, no direct effect. The interaction energy is set equal to zero. Then region 2, at some intermediate distance, in this case there is some attractive force between the molecules of the fluid and the pore wall. And then region 3, the one closest to the pore wall, here the repulsion between the molecules of the fluid and the wall is so strong that no molecule can be present at such short distances. So this is how we split the region within the pore in an empirical manner. With this picture of what happens inside the pore, we went on to use the generalized Van der Waal theory, which is an approach to statistical mechanics. Without going into the details of statistical mechanics, to develop a model, we need to have an expression for the free volume, which is the volume available for the insertion of another molecule in the system and for the configurational energy. So if we have a model for the free volume and for the configurational energy, then we have a so-called canonical partition function from which we can develop an expression for the Helmholtz energy and for an equation of state. So the first thing we did almost 15 years ago was to think about spheres, spherical molecules within cylindrical pores. And we had data for spheres in cylinders, porosity data, and we fitted this data to an empirical expression. By doing that, we can develop an expression for the free volume. Then we need to go and try to come up with an expression for the configurational energy. And the configurational energy is the summation of the configurational energy of the fluid-fluid interactions and of the fluid-wall interaction. So for the fluid-fluid interaction, we just use it in our first develop development. That's made the same assumptions as in the Van der Waals equation of state. And for the fluid wall interactions, we developed empirical expressions for the amount of molecules present in region 2, the region that undergoes or that suffers attractive interactions from the wall. So it's quite a long development. I'm not going into the details, but this was the idea, to come up with an empirical expression to describe how many molecules are in region 2 and then if we know how many are in region 2, then we can calculate the con their contribution to the configurational energy. The algebra is quite long, but once it's done, we get an expression for the pressure that appears on the upper part of this slide. We can easily see that within the pink box, we have the Van der Waals equation of state, but there is an additional term now, and this additional term exactly accounts for the fluid wall interactions. We can also develop an expression for the chemical potential, which appears in the lower part of this uh, slide. 
With the repurposed Van der Waals equation of state, things are a little bit more complicated than with the conventional one. This is a plot of the pressure against molar volume. And the solid line shows a typical isotherm. So that could have come from the conventional equation of state. But the dotted line shows, shows a more complicated behavior. There are certain pressures for which there are five different roots. The origin of Van der Waals equation of state is a cubic equation of state, meaning that at each pressure you may find up to three real roots. But with the extended Van der Waals equation of state for confined fluids, we can get up to five different roots. Here is one of the first examples we've got with this sort of model. This represents adsorption isotherms of methane and ethane using a repurposed Van der Waals equation of state at the temperature that appears on the screen on molecular sieve MCM41. This plot shows a prediction. So here we predicted the behavior of a mixture of methane and ethane on the same solid without fitting any additional parameter. So the pure component calculations were correlations. We fitted parameters for methane and ethane, but then we applied to the binary mixer in a predictive manner. Our first work in this line was with the extension of the Van der Waals equation of state. But shortly after, we decided to extend other models, such as the Peng Rogson, Radlich Huang, and Suave Radlich Huang equations of state. All of them, and also the Van der Waals equation of state, can be put into the generalized form that appears on the screen, where we have several uh, symbols whose meaning is outlined in this slide and in this one and in this one. In this way, we have a general framework in which we can plug different contributions and have extended representations or repurposed versions of Van der Waals Radlich Kwong, Suave Radlich Kwong, and the Peng Robinson equations of state. Here is an example of the extended Peng Robinson equation of state applied to a case in which we have two different pore sizes. And within each pore with the specifications of this problem, we found a region that contains liquid and a region that contains vapor. So by combining the effect of confinement and gravity, we were able to predict a transition region, which is a region that occurs within real petroleum reservoirs, a region in which at the same level, at the same level within the, within the reservoir, you may find liquids and you may find vapor. We continue this line of work by considering other geometries. Here is the case of spheres in spherical molecules inside spherical pores. We fitted empirical expressions for the porosity and for the coordination number as a function of geometric parameters. The coordination number is the number of neighbors to a central molecule. This plot illustrates what we did for spherical molecules inside slit pores. And we work with pore size distributions, which we model as a combination of log normal distributions. Here is an example of calculation with pore size distributions. The figure on top represents an adsorption isotherm of methanol on MCM48 at 313.15 Kelvin. There are two lines. The dotted line is what we obtain if we assume that there is a single pore size in the solid. There is pore condensation, which occurs at the pressure, at the bulk phase pressure, where we observe a sudden jump in adsorbed amount. This means that the fluid within the pore changed from a vapor-like to a liquid-like density. The experimental data does not show such a sudden jump 
it's a little bit smoother and we can reproduce this smoothness by assuming that there is a pore size distribution. The corresponding pore size distribution for this case appears at the bottom figure. So this represents the pore size distribution that we infer for this solid in the case of methanol adsorption. This result shows the adsorption of carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrogen, these three pure substances, on activated carbon NORIT R1 at 298 Kelvin, and a very good representation, and the bottom figure represents the pore size distribution inferred to, from our model compared to the pore size distribution inferred from a classical DFT calculation. Another type of calculation that we have performed with these models is the adsorption on ZIFs, zeolitic imidazolate frameworks, which are synthetic materials whose pore size distribution is meant to be very narrow, well-defined pore sizes. This slide shows adsorption isotherms of several pure substances on ZIF-8. And the last figure on the bottom right is the inferred pore size distribution from these calculations. And there is a single peak. Here it's important to mention that our parameter fitting program for pore size distributions is free to choose how many peaks the distribution will have. And the calculations indicated the presence of a single peak, which is consistent with the fact that these materials, the zifts, have well-defined pore sizes. All of the examples so far have been with repurposed cubic equations of state, such, a, such as extended versions of peng Ramson or the Van der Waals equation of state. What about extending a non-cubic equation of state, such as an equation of state of the Saft family, statistical associating fluid theory? We, yes, we have done that, and it's a little bit more complicated because these equations are far more complicated than cubic equations of state. I would like to share with you two different examples with this model. The first one, is the adsorption of carbon dioxide in zeolite 13x at different temperatures, and there is an excellent agreement between calculated results and experimental data from the literature. And the other example is the adsorption of water on zeolite 13x at 313.15 Kelvin. And again, there is excellent agreement between the experimental data and the results of our calculations. So here are my takeaway messages. First, repurposing conventional equations of state to model confined fluids requires the careful selection of approximation. But then, the resulting models can represent various types of adsorption behavior. They can be used to fit pore size distributions and the computational times with these models are very similar to the computational time of the originating equation of state. Some questions remain open. The first of them has to do with the calculation of heats of adsorption. We need to perform more calculations to come up with a conclusion about the quality of our predictions. And regarding the multipotential theory of adsorption, we are currently working on extending our program to include the global phase stability test in order to deal with poor condensation and to apply our program to the case of mesopores. What I have shown is the result of collaborations with several professionals at different institutions. At Texas A&M University, Dr. Yanis Economo and our students at the Federal University of Rio, Drs. Frederico Tavares, Gabriel Barbosa, and Leonardo Travaloni, Dr. Stanley Sandler in the early stages of this work at the University of Delaware, and Dr. Luis Fernando Franco and our PhD student Andrea Gonzalez at Unicamp. 
Thank you for watching my presentation. Please feel free to contact me if you have questions about this work. Goodbye.